Welcome to the Beach Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my latest accidental purchase. It is a 2004 Dodge Viper, but it's also the most annoying Dodge Viper in the world. Now, a lot of this is because of the previous owner's questionable decisions, but there's a lot of issues with it as well uh, that I didn't realize I was getting when I bought the car. Now, personally, I love the third gen Dodge Viper. You still get the potent V10 under the hood with way more power, 500 horsepower, and a lot more refinement than the first and second generation Viper, which are uh, basically pieces of fiberglass and, well, plywood. Uh, total unrefined, well, craziness. Uh, this one would be a much nicer driving experience if it didn't sound like this, among other issues. Oh, the drone. Ugh. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear me over this exhaust, which I imagine is straight piped, and it had the result of making this sound like it's just farting continuously. I mean, it is absolutely deafening. Whoever thought this was a good idea, I they are a complete idiot, I'm sorry. But that's not the only issue with this 2004 Viper that is now at a tolerable noise, but sounds like a tractor, sort of like my Lamborghini tractor. Unfortunately, sort of like my tractor, it's not running very well on one side of its engine. Instead of two cylinders, though, it, uh, it has five cylinders on that side that like to pop and misfire a whole lot. I started to smell the parking brake, too. That was my own stupidity there, leaving that up. But wait, there's more, and this is where it starts to get dangerous. You get on the car a little bit, and it just immediately slips. It's, it's all over the place uh, for two reasons. Number one, the tires are almost 10 years old, so the 500 horsepower has no traction to put it down thanks to the old tires. And also, the steering, well, it's, it's really, really loose and numb. Uh, the whole suspension, it just feels weird. And I've had one of these before, a 2003 Viper. It was a salvage title, but it drove so much better than this one. So I'm really not sure what's going on. I'm also not sure you guys can hear a word I'm saying over this horrific exhaust. Here, let me put the window up, just maybe to help a little bit. That is so sketchy. It probably doesn't show on camera, but it feels really unstable, unfortunately. And this is supposed to be the refined, nice Viper. Now we are gonna head up to the Car Wizards today to see all the things that are wrong with this Viper and discover uh, what the exhaust is on it, if it has any at all. But first, let's go back to the hangar and I'll give you a tour of this thing. And I wanna explain why I wanted a third generation Dodge Viper, even though it is by far the least popular. But before we tour the most annoying Viper ever, I'd like to thank ShipStation for sponsoring today's video. Obviously, the holidays are usually the busiest time of year for everybody, including myself. And if you're selling online like me, it's also a critical time to sell as much as possible during the season of giving. And one thing you don't want to get stuck with is worrying about shipping orders. So let ShipStation do the heavy lifting so you and your team can put your time, money, and energy into more important things. And most importantly, your customers are still completely satisfied. Whether you're shipping from your house or multiple warehouses, ShipStation can increase your holiday profitability. ShipStation provides integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You can manage every order from one simple dashboard, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. And I know this personally because I use ShipStation to sell my merch. I had a huge bump in sales when I offered my new Hoobies Farm shirts, and ShipStation took all the stress and work out of it. We've not only saved so much time with the simple automation of shipping, but also a lot of money. You can get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use my promo code to try ShipStation for free for two months. So there's really no reason not to get started selling online. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Let your customers shop risk-free this holiday season with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash Hoovies and sign up for a free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com slash Hoovies. Now let's tour the really annoying Viper. Yeah, that is completely miserable, even though it doesn't need to be. This is supposed to be the refined 
Dodge Viper, the comfortable, the most GT feeling Viper of them all. And that's why I love the third generation. So many improvements over the early Dodge Vipers where you didn't get air conditioning. You got a crappy toupee for a top. You didn't get a lot of things and they fixed it all with this generation in 2003. You see the door poppers, they're electric. The first generation of Viper didn't even have an exterior door handle. You had to reach inside and there was no locks either, obviously, because you needed to reach inside to get the door handle. The early ones had no air conditioning as well, uh, missing a lot of things. Whereas this, well, it does look very crude still. A lot of hard plastics and stuff from 90s Dodge vehicles, uh, but much more refined. The seats as well, much more comfortable with nice bolstering. This one has a little dent in it though, and the suede liner. Also a decent stereo, which I wouldn't know because I can't hear it over the darn exhaust. Uh, this panel would be hiding an exhaust under here. A really cool side pipe setup that we'll see uh, what is lying underneath there, but this car, unlike a lot of Vipers, it has no accidents on the Carfax. I don't think it's ever had any paint work. So whoever owned this was actually able to keep it on the road, but I can't imagine they drove it very much after doing that exhaust elite because it is absolutely unbearable. Now, I bought this at the last Barrett Jackson auction in New Orleans. I was working there with April and uh, we wanted a car to go on a little road trip with from New Orleans to the Florida Panhandle. And this was on my list. I thought, well, if it goes for much over $40,000, I won't buy it, but 40 or 41, that's my max. And I'll take it because that's a great deal for a third generation Dodge Viper and it sold for 41. So I brought it home. It's a lot of car for the money, obviously. And the third generation Vipers are probably the cheapest generation. The first ones, the early ones are cheap as well, but this is about the same money and you get, I think, a very beautiful design, a much more refined car. And you can park it in a row of supercars, something you paid mid-level Camry pricing on and fit right in. And well, take it on road trips as well because you have a decent trunk space and that's how you put the top down. Very easy manual top operation and unlike a lot of modern supercars you get a six-speed manual transmission a big plus for not a big premium but it still is pretty crude in the supercar world such as popping the hood anybody can go and do it whether the car has been locked or not as I did just right there and boom I can see the poorly running V10 engine, 8.3 liter, 500 horsepower. And you can see everything is very simple here. Obviously they found a lot more horsepower, about a hundred more than when the Viper came out 10 years earlier, but it still is a total push rod dinosaur here. Very simple, easy to work on, easy to figure out. Another big plus of the Viper compared to, well, it's exotic cousins. So I am happy with this purchase. It was a low enough price. You know, when you're buying a car at auction, you can't test drive it. You have to account for at least 10% of the purchase price to go through and sort things out unless you're really lucky because you can start up and hear the engine run, but you really don't know how it drives. I knew the exhaust was loud, but when I went on that 200 mile road trip in it, uh, we put in our earbuds for noise canceling and it was still totally miserable. So I'm not looking forward to the drive up to the car wizards. I won't subject you to any more of that because I'm sure the audio is just absolutely awful. Uh, so let's head up there and see what the wizard thinks. So I actually got up here a little too late because the wizard was leaving on his 20th anniversary trip. So it's been up here for a week actually yes. waiting for its turn and you've jumped the gun on me a little bit. So I dropped it off with issues with the steering, everything feeling really vague and sort of bouncy in the suspension, the noise terrible and it seemed to be running really rough. So mm -hmm. I see you already have the cover off, which is kind of nice because the first generation Viper, you get out and you can burn yourself, but this one, they obviously protect you a bit. Two layers, huh? Yeah, they put some thicker heat insulation and did some rearranging of the cats, which yours doesn't have. It, really? Yeah. Well, that explains it. So somebody did a cat delete and this, <laughs> this is it for a muffler, huh? Just a one little tiny glass pack. I know from experience, especially on my Viper, when you delete the cats, your car is going to start sounding like doo-doo. It, it just sounds like it's farting all the time. It does. It's bad. So you have a 95 Viper. 94. 94. Okay. Yes. Well, I definitely need a cat, huh? Definitely. Some mini cats, some small high flow mini cats. That's what I did on mine and it immediately sounded so much better. Okay. Well, so what about the rough running? The rough running? Grime, me and Grimes are looking at it, and we kind of come to the conclusion after we looked at scan tool data, looking for misfires, things that are wrong. The computer's happy. 
No the, check engine light. It doesn't like it's um, sound like it's missing. It sounds like it's been performance tuned and canned. So like a lumpy idle with yes. a cam. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's been hopped up, which would explain why it's so difficult to get the rear tires to hook up. Right. Also age, but also because it has more power, which I guess is cool, but I need new tires because they're nine years old, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. They're getting on close to 10 years old, yes. So it's definitely rowdier, but that doesn't explain why it feels so bad in the driving experience. That we actually have an answer. Grimes found what's going on there. You see how this sludge... Oh, the shocks are blown, huh? Blown out shock there. See that this one just started. Okay. And then in the rear. Yeah, it was bouncing in the rear, but it just felt really unsettled. These little forks are just coated in sludge ah. from the shocks being blown out. Okay. This one is on its way out as well. Well, at 30 something thousand miles, I guess the car is 20 years old, so. Yeah. Yeah, but otherwise, does it look okay? Amazingly, it does. Yeah? There's a tiny oil seepage over here that probably not even worth messing with unless uh, it gets worse. Oh, I can, yeah, I can barely see it. All right. Yeah. And <laughs> rust? Yes. Uh, what's going on there? Is that the, is the cover just keeping water? Yeah, condensation or rainwater, whatever just collects here. And Well, thankfully, it's still solid to yeah. where we could wire brush clean that up and it'd be okay but still overall even though this is the more refined sort of advanced viper it's still uh pretty crude compared to most supercars i guess they have a little bit of aerodynamics going on here but uh not too fancy no it's an american muscle car yeah it's a muscle car but it's also a supercar so i don't really know i've never done shocks on a viper before to know if it's uh supercar prices or like Dodge Neon prices. Probably supercar prices, but let's go find out. Well, if you want to look that up in the office, that'd be great because I want to check on my Lambo tractor. Oh, yeah, he's got some uh, info for you on your Lambo. Man, what a lineup. The Gated Mercy, the Alpha, Wizard's crazy crackhead truck, the J10, and my new Lamborghini back here with Crazy D in the tractor wing of the wizard shop so yeah. this is my 1969 lamborghini r230 dt tractor this is a real lamborghini if you haven't caught the first video uh, definitely check it out and crazy d's channel as well where he did a deep mechanical dive and now he's diving into it deeper uh, basically one side of the engine isn't running uh, this side isn't firing and then none of the stuff on the back was working among other things that well this was turning but the whole lift was not doing its job, right? Yeah, the three points not going up and down. Uh, we were able to chase it down. We know that the, so this here is uh, the actuator that runs the, the three point. It's not working op operating correctly. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to replace that. If you take a peek, I don't know if they can see, but that oil is not supposed to look like that. That's so, a bunch of water in there. Yeah, huh? lots of water. Um, we drained the oil out of the engine it was uh, probably about 10% water, about 15% diesel, and then the rest oil. So you got a lot of diesel that's just passing through, slipping, so it's gonna need rings. And we drained the front differential and there was no oil, but there was a lot of water. So, and that, that, that grinding noise you were hearing when uh -huh. you first put it in the gear, that is not coming from the transmission like we thought. Okay. It's coming from your front differential. So we're going to have to do a deep dive into there. Uh, the doc, which is my brother, does most of the heavy mechanic lifting. Yeah. He doesn't want to open anything up until we are for sure. We have a parts manual and stuff, which I've traced down. I have now have located where to get parts, and I've located where to get what we needed. The only good thing is my transmission doesn't need a rebuild. Yeah, your transmission's not going to need a rebuild. So we. <laughs> but uh, everything else, and I noticed uh, it's. Sagging a little bit on one side too, yeah, huh? Yeah, we're, we're gonna have to replace a tire, which, you know, I happen to happen to already have tires this size in stock. So we're gonna be, we're, we're, in, we're in luck there, so. So this is a bit of a project. We'll have it ready for you in spring. Now, we just need to decide how deep you wanna go. So, I mean, do you want it all pretty and shiny or do you just want it as a work machine? I guess you need to uh, put together numbers for me as yeah. far as, uh, does he have the tin work to replace had, all this? The guy said he had tin work and stuff. So okay, like this too? I, I, I have to find out for sure, but he said he knew he had hoods for this thing and stuff. So um, he was a very interesting gentleman. And 
I got a whole lot of Lamborghini history for for Lamborghinis in America from the guy. So he seems oh. to really know his stuff. So it was really interesting to talk to him and I really enjoyed it. But he didn't give you any prices yet. He didn't give me prices yet. The only thing I know is the uh, manual, the manual for the parts manual was gonna be like 50 bucks, which is not bad. Well, so that's a start. Yeah, All that's right. a start, so yeah. It's obviously way worse than I thought it was. I, I guess it's spent some time underwater. I, I don't know. Well, it came out of Washington State, right? Mm -hmm. So lots of rain and it did sit outside, so. There's a lots of places the water can seep in. Well, still, it's a Lamborghini, and we have a total mystery on how much the parts are going to cost. Sort of like the Viper, but the wizard should have an answer for me right now. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, no problem. And wizard is shopping for a Viper? A real one? Green tree pythons. A python? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty snake. For $10,000? Yes, ten grand. Oh, but it's a nine animal collection, so you get a lot of uh, snakes. Mm-hmm. I didn't think you liked snakes. I actually don't, but working on this Viper has got me in the, the snake mood, I guess. Well, surely Viper shocks aren't $10,000, wizard. Well, not the shocks themselves. Well, they could be, actually. The yeah. brand new ones are stupid expensive for that car, like over a grand per wheel. Just for the part. Wonderful. Okay, so is that what we're doing? No, we're not doing that. So I'll start from the top. Okay. We can put some high-flow mini cats, which are round, they fit in there exactly. They're not the octagonal. Or... They're ball shaped. No, they're round as far as a cylinder. Oh, okay. Three hundred bucks can get those in, and that'll bring the sound level, make it nice. That so sounds it'll, wonderful. Won't be obnoxious. Okay. We can put all four SRT10 shocks. They're good used ones. Mm -hmm. They're not blown out. Twenty-seven fifty for all four with labor. Used. Used. Oh, wow. Around 500 bucks per wheel. Wow. All right. That's a little worse than I thought. Yes. Uh-huh. So you see we're getting close to that green tree. Bottom. Yeah, yeah, we sure are. Okay. We didn't, we're not even done yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, oil change, service, all the fluids, 800 bucks. Mm. An About alignment, typical. 150. Okay. And a set of four tires, two grand. Yeah, I remember that from my old Viper. They're very, very big, thick on the rear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Big boys. Yeah, big boys. And I need it to hook up because it has been modified, which, I mean, could you undo all of that if you wanted to as far as taking the... It, but it, it has no check engine light because of the oxygen sensors, which is weird. So it's been tuned. The ECU's yes. been changed somewhat, right? Yes, to accommodate this cam and whatever. Who knows what else they've done. Okay. But uh, it could be brought back to stock, but could be very expensive. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. So. Yeah. So 6500 for everything involved. We're really not doing all that much. That's what I was meaning. It's almost supercar prices. Yeah, well, that's a shame because the car is so cheap for the entry price. Mm -hmm. But then it is a low production car and it doesn't really share much when it comes to suspension, when it comes to engine, when it, all that stuff's pretty bespoke to the Viper. Yes. And they don't make the Viper anymore, so prices are expensive. Things on my on my 94, like the headlights, if I were to break them, they're like five grand per headlight. Huh. So there's a lot of things that can be cheap, then there's a lot of things that are really stupidly high. Yeah. Well, I don't have a choice. It drives like such garbage. I have to fix it. It's more than I wanted to spend, obviously, sorting the car out, but I did buy it pretty cheap at auction, so I should be okay in the long run. Yeah. Well, fire away, wizard. <laughs> She's... Um... That is a lot, but you've never done me wrong before, and we've mm -hmm. been doing this for a long time, been partners in this YouTube for uh, six plus years now. But mm -hmm. now I have my new channel and a new uh, well, sparring partner when it comes to YouTube. April, did you watch Good Morning YouTube? I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I subscribed. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you so much. So be sure to check out my new channel, Good Morning YouTube. Here's a preview, and link below will be the second episode, a Halloween special. This Lamborghini <laughs> is in a costume. Well, what do we have here? <laughs> so this is a super secret test car Ooh. that somebody photographed. It is the replacement for the Lamborghini Huracan, right. which is the entry-level Lamborghini sports car. There's no name yet. Okay. Now the Aventador has been replaced with the right. Revuelto. Still a V12. Mm -hmm. It's a hybrid, a thousand right. horsepower. The Huracan is being replaced as well with this, and it was driving around completely silent, right. totally electric. Right. 
until it hit a turn and then the motor kicked oh. on and it's not a V10 anymore. So right. previously uh, it was a V10 in the Gallardo and a V10 in the Huracan. And what's funny about this photo is they actually made this look like a Gallardo, an early one from 20 <laughs> right. years ago. So it's in like a 20 year old Lamborghini costume, this latest and greatest Lamborghini driving around. Uh, but now it's definitely a V8 probably a flat plane crank, kind right. of like the new Z06, which has a very distinctive right. noise, right. probably twin turbo. So this is going to be an absolute right. monster, but it's not a big V10 anymore. No, but it's, it's the hybrid. That's where everyone's going. I feel like I remember when the E-Ray, they were pushing that out, the Corvette C8, and you're thinking it's going to be all electric, but it really only ran fully electric for like two to three miles, and right. that was it. But they promoted being all electric. I'm curious to see what they're going to promote this as. I don't know, but it is going to be really cool. I love the old school stuff mm -hmm. and I'm definitely scared of hybrids. Um, mm -hmm. So my previous Lamborghinis, like the newest I've had is a Murcielago, right. which you can still fix. You know, pretty much anybody can mm -hmm. plug in and get the right computer to fix that car. Mm -hmm. The next generation, extremely difficult. And the hybrid cars, even though Lamborghini hasn't done it officially yet, other mm -hmm. than the really small production, uh, the batteries, like the last 10 years, and then it's multiple six figures to replace right, these batteries right. on some high-end cars like the McLaren P1 or the Ferrari LaFerrari. So owning these things used as hooties, right. which is how I kind of buy cars, <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem promising to me, right. but it's certainly, but I mean, how, that's just the way the world is nowadays. How do you feel about supercars going the way of electric? Do you feel like they should be just completely called something else when they get to the hybrid stage or the electric stage? 